I'm Dave Tussin, and you're listening to George Fox Talks Leadership. All right, we're off. Here we go. <laughs> Stan, I'm really happy to have you here today. Thank, Thank you so you. much for coming. This isn't your hometown, no. so it's a little out of the way for you. So thanks for making it work. Well, my pleasure. I'm privileged to be here. Thank you. Um, I didn't know you before, really prepping for this a whole lot, but uh, our mutual friend Chuck Mylander connected us. Mm-hmm. Um, this topic is really near and dear to my heart. I'm trying to, trying to live this out, and I know you're doing the same. Yeah. The topic is servant leadership. And that's a very broad word that we'll kind of explore today or a series of words. Um, But before we kind of jump into that, I wanted to just let people know who you are. You're the executive director for Evangelical Friends Missions, which is a phenomenal organization. Um, We can talk about that a little more later. Um, But I I do know that organization a lot. That's how I first um, came to know who you are a little bit. And I've seen seen you at work and um, know that you really do try to walk this talk of servant Mm -hmm. leadership through that. So really, we'll just talk today, like, what is servant leadership? Yeah. Um, what's that look like? Where did it come from? It's kind of taking on maybe a life of its own in this in this um, world today and in, in business and beyond. Um, it used to kind of seem really out there from a, from a leadership perspective. And now a lot of people, big companies are talking about servant leadership, but it's yeah. not a business thing, actually. It just starts right. out like how, how we interact with each other. So right. um, maybe I'll just start there. How do you think about servant leadership? Like, what does it mean to you? Yeah. Well, in some ways, this feels like um, a bit of a, <laughs> one of those things that's almost like a you can trap yourself in this because yeah. the very second you start talking about servant leadership and acting like you're an expert in it, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> all of a sudden you're not. Yep. It's just like that. So I I want to be really um, careful to point to to Jesus as the one who gives us the, the best example of that. Mm. And the way I think Jesus lived his life was as he walked around, um, he saw himself as not the most important person in the room. Um, I think he saw, first of all, uh, the work of God as the most important thing going on in the room. And then out of that, he was able to look at people around him and actually identify them as the most important people in the room. And so that's why every interaction he seemed to have with people, they were drawn to him because they were able to sense that he saw the dignity in them, that he saw the potential in them, um, and that he loved them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's powerful right there. I mean, if, if, if people walk and live that way, <laughs> think think how different things would be. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I like how you just made it so simple like that, because that is um, the essence of servant leadership right there. And some key words you used in there, you know, he everyone is valued. Everyone has yeah. value and worth. And, you know, we should look for that in others and, you know, not put ourselves above others. And uh, this is very countercultural in, in many parts of the world. Yeah. Um, but it's starting to be a, be appreciated more, I'd say, than it had been for a while. And so, you know, at, at your workplace, kind of what is what does this look like when you and your team practice this? I mean, it's not like you're saying we are servant leaders here. Right. You're probably not calling it out, but you're trying to operate that way because of how. Um, your focus is on on Jesus and, and yeah. serving in the world, but you know, kind of, what's it like at your workplace? How do you do that? Well, um, there's there's probably two contexts. Mm-hmm. First, of, the first context would be how do we as a staff interact with um, those around us? Mm-hmm. And so, one of the questions that we try to ask, and our hope is that we can ask it sincerely, is that. Our job is to be a blessing to you. Mm. Our desire is to serve you. And so if we're talking to church leaders, for example, that's one of the the main questions I try to ask is, how can we be a blessing to you? Mm. Um, So often, parachurch organizations and their relationships with the church, there just kind of seems to be this thing where um, the church church leaders, I should say, kind of feel like, oh, the only reason they show up is so that we can really help them. Mm-hmm. 
And I, I don't think that's the underlying intent or the most uh, noble intent, but it's, it's often true. And so we try to try to maintain a posture of, so how can we help you? If, if this is something that God wants us to do, let's, let's just say, uh, be a part of helping everyone in the world experience his love, you know, the love has to flow between us as well. And so that means mm. not objectifying the, the church leader, but actually saying, okay, how can we right. do it, be in this together? Yeah. Um, just real quick, in terms of our staff, just a few things that we try to do is um, when we have staff meetings and stuff, we try to have the idea, the, the print, use the principle that the best idea wins no matter who it comes from. Um, and so that allows everyone in the room to feel comfortable um, knowing that we're going to listen to that idea. Mm-hmm. And if it's the best idea, we'll, we're going to go with it no matter who, who it is. And honestly, I, I've, my, from my experience, some of the people who are kind of in the nitty gritty and in the details actually are able to have the best ideas because they're the ones who's yeah. closest to it. Yeah. So they get it better than anyone else. Maybe. Yeah. No, that's a great, um, something you said at the first part, um, you clearly everyone's kind of really focused and it works well when like, what's the ultimate purpose here that we're trying to accomplish together, Mm -hmm. um, versus what am I trying to do just for myself? That's a big difference. And when, when the team and people are focused on how can we, can we collectively accomplish this bigger purpose in the world and society through serving, and then you have to think through like, who are we trying to serve out there and and why? And then like, what are the steps, you know, each, each piece of the journey to that ultimate purpose? How can I contribute to serving on that path? Exactly. Makes a big difference versus just like, okay, I need to do this today. doesn't matter why. (laughs) Right. Um, Right. Exactly. And then something, you know, else you said, uh, it helps you think through the people, you know, it's really people first, people yeah. orientation, serving all the way through this journey. And if you take this concept, you know, everybody is has in inherent value and worth and wants to contribute and serve in this way. Think how awesome that is that you don't have to be the leader or the one coming up with the ideas. Like, right. oh, I'm so thankful <laughs> that we have this team of people that are all wanting to serve. It does make it interesting as the leader by title that you might have, though. What do you do then? You know, how, yeah. how do you f- kind of foster that environment? Well, I'll tell you what I try to do. You can talk to our staff to see if I actually pull it off. But um, I find that if I actually listen mm. and, and actually will ask a question that allows sort of one more observation from someone on our staff who has a concern or whatever, um, it really helps me to understand what the big concerns are. And for the most part, their concerns are legitimate, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There's something underneath there. And so, and it's whatever they have, that concern is actually going to help the whole organization, the vision. And in our situation, it's going to help what God's doing around the world. So, um, the place where I have to kind of back off and, and maybe try to power down a little bit is to just assume I know what they're trying to say and I know what the results are. And if I can ask just one more clarifying question, often we're going to get down into the to the place where I can actually see their concern. And by actually see their concern, either address it with them personally or see how we need to address it organizationally. Mm-hmm. And, um, and they'll often even have ideas about how to do that. Mm-hmm. They've been thinking about it more than I have. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so listening is a really key, key concept in terms of how we try to interact with one another as mm-hmm. a staff. And we're still learning how to do it. But <laughs> it's it really helps hard us. sometimes. <laughs> it really is. But, but when we do that, we actually do better. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, it's funny you mentioned that. I was listening to a different podcast yesterday, um, and it was the CEO of Netflix, actually. Mm. And he was talking about this, trying to create a culture where, tell me more about that. What yeah. else? You know, yeah. just taking the time to yeah. tell me more about that. What else? Yeah. <laughs> Inviting that 
and it's in, you know, for someone in certain roles, it's always in the back of your head, this is going too slow. Like, yeah, <laughs> I could get, I know, I think I know the answer. Yeah. It's always that um, little voice, like, hurry up, this is taking too long, which isn't the right way to do it. Um, but that is a tension. How do you kind of balance that? You know, asking more questions, listening more can go real slow. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. But well, there's some, some benefits to that too. Yeah, there, <laughs> well, there are. Um, and you, your world's a little different than mine. You're in the for-profit world more strongly than I am. Mm -hmm. But but I think maybe the result is the same. You go slow to go fast, mm -hmm. right? And so what if by asking that one question, an idea comes up that propels us, you know, um, significantly mm -hmm. farther mm -hmm. than we, we would have gone had it just been, no, 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 yeah. no, we're, we're pounding it. Right bounding through this now. Um, and so, you know, that one idea, what if in that w one idea, it sort of launches you into something that you never would have gotten to had mm -hmm. you not taken that time. Mm -hmm. And I know that that happens in, uh, in this um, world that I live in, this mm -hmm. nonprofit world. Mm -hmm. I know that happens a lot. Um, and I think it, it hap I've heard of it happening in the, in the profit world a lot too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's a good way you put it. It might go slow, but it can go really fast once the whole team is kind of on the same page yeah. and really bought into to this. Um, then everybody kind of knows and it doesn't have to, again, go back on the leader to say, let's do this. People feel invested, feel engaged as part of this and they want to want to see that change, too. Yeah. So then it's exactly. just a whole different model and a d dynamic. And again, I believe the people that I, I work with and interact with are just as just as as valuable and impactful in the world as I am. And so I don't assume that my ideas, like you said earlier, are, right. the, are the only ones that would work. And most of the time, I'm really thankful there's other people that yeah. have ideas. Yeah. <laughs> um, what does it you know, what does it look like then to kind of share or delegate power kind of in this model, you know, mm -hmm. how, how do you, um, d bring other people into it to, to lead in, in certain zones or say, Hey, I want you to just take this over. How, how kind of does that work for you? Well, I think clarity is really helpful in all of this. Um, so when you're talking about delegation and, and, and I'm even trying to think in terms of like commissioning people, mm. commissioning feels just a little bit yeah. more empowering like than delegating. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know if it is, but in, at least in my brain, I, I, think I feel is. like, yeah. yeah. So I like to commission people. And yeah. when people are commissioned, it's really good if they know what they're supposed to do and what their parameters are and how much sort of freedom they have and where do we need to touch bases on stuff? Where do we need to bring everyone in? Mm -hmm. So, um, And so helping bring clarity mm -hmm. to, to what we're trying to do Mm -hmm. And what they're trying to do is really good. And the thing I, I think is really powerful about commissioning over delegating is that in my mind, commissioning actually rises out of the person who's commissioned. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the things we try to do is if you have an idea, that's your idea. And if the idea fits, you probably, you've been thinking about this a right. lot longer than we have. So <laughs> yeah. you probably have what it takes right. um, to to push through and, and, and get it done. And so our job then becomes providing the resources hmm. that people need mm -hmm. to actually act on that. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, I, I think that whole idea of commissioning rather than delegating, um, allowing the ideas that come up out of the person to actually focus what they do mm -hmm. can be really powerful in releasing them to become. Right. Um, not only who they're supposed to become, but accomplish what they're supposed right. to accomplish. Yeah. I think I love this because it doesn't have to be applied in any one context. It can apply right. in, in like, you know, a small team here at the university, working on a group project together. Yeah. Um, it could apply, you know, at home. I mean, there's concepts here of, of serving others, but still leading how to then, you know, if it's kind of an, in an ambiguous context, sometimes that could happen in, in a, you know, a church or at yeah. work, like, oh, we're all here together. Who's the one that's supposed to be the leader? Kind of, what does that look like from a servant leadership yeah. perspective? <laughs> well, do you uh, even need somebody to be the leader in those situations? Or, or is it just kind of 
how does it, how does it organically or, or, you know, yeah. less organically <laughs> organize? I'm curious. <laughs> yeah. Well, in my experience, there are actually people, if we, if we look at how people are wired, mm -hmm. there are actually places where one person is actually wired to lead in that situation, but they might not be wired to lead in another situation. Mm -hmm. Sure. And so like, I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. So like, um, you can say that I'm the leader of this organization, but when it comes to operations and logistics and all that, I'm not the leader because mm -hmm. I, I, I would mess it all up. And so there's a person, I, you know, we have people who, and, who are really good at that and we've commissioned them to be operations persons. Mm -hmm. And so when we're sitting in the meeting, I want them to sort of take the lead on mm -hmm. it. Their, their brains are wired in such a way that they're going to see things that I would never see. They're going to ask questions mm -hmm. that I would never, mm -hmm. never think of asking. And yeah. so trying to give them the room um, to do that. And again, that kind of comes out of this commissioning, you know, you're commissioned for operations or you're commissioned for, right. um, you know, marketing, whatever it might be, they're thinking about it all the time. Mm -hmm. And so we need to give them the room to actually lead. But even then there's sort of an inductiveness or can be an inductiveness to, to the way that they lead. It's like my idea can be sort of a, you know, you can bring it sort of as a, a foil mm -hmm. that everyone can else can kind of push against. And then out of that bubbles up the very best mm -hmm. approach or the mm -hmm. very best idea. Mm -hmm. Right. So if a leader comes with the idea of like, I'm not proposing the answer, I'm proposing, proposing a, an idea to get us launched towards discerning the answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And, it, and again, then the, all of a sudden it doesn't, matter hierarchically where right. you sit around the table. Yeah. Right. I think that that um, model and approach is probably increasingly valuable just because the world is so chaotic these days. Exactly. <laughs> uh, you can't really plan for a whole lot. You can't assume that, you know, what, what you already have done will continue to work. And so, you know, having a great group of people that can kind of step up and lead in different situations and, and the team's like, yep, go for it. I'm thankful that you have <laughs> kind of that wiring and, and yeah, the expertise exactly. really works well. I, I'll, an example for me, um, I, I am really impressed with my wife's ability. If there's like yeah. some kind of chaos or crisis, yeah. I'm like, wow, she's normally pretty mild mannered you know, um, doesn't really want to lead, but if something bad happens, she's like right there and yeah. able to just snap into action at an amazing, some people are sitting there looking like, what should I do? She's like, boom, in action. It's amazing yeah. how she's yeah. wired that way. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that she can do that. So yeah. that's a good, thank you for talking about kind of how that can work. Um, maybe shifting gears a little bit in the world of servant leadership, I think there could be some pitfalls sometimes too. We've talked a little of that, like direction. How do you how do you discern and, and go in a direction as a group um, without kind of maybe but easily violating some of those concepts of yeah. servant leadership? <laughs> well, I don't think that servant leadership is opposed to persuasion. Mm -hmm. um, I think what servant leadership is opposed to is compulsion, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so as a leader or in a, whether you find, wherever you find yourself, you know, if, if, if the idea is good enough, if the action is strong enough, there ought to be behind it some pretty persuasive reasons why that, why that's a good way to go. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, um, if you've created sort of this more collaborative, we're all in this together kind of a moment, um, then you can persuade, you can persuade that. And I don't, and I understand that there is a line there because sometimes if you have the hierarchical, if you have the title, people are just going to go, oh, that's boss. They're just going to do what <laughs> right. they want. So you have to be really careful with that and you have to be, 
a gentle, for lack of a mm-hmm. better word, I mm-hmm. guess, with it. But if you can explain to people calmly and clearly why a, a certain approach is better, I I think at the end of that, if it's done well, people don't feel stepped on. Mm-hmm. They feel included in mm-hmm. it. And the reasons for doing it then actually become their reasons mm-hmm. as well, yeah. if that yep. makes sense. Totally makes sense. I mean, there is, as kind of business... Um, research has progressed over the years. There's a lot more research supporting just that, you know, bring people along the journey, the whole transition management, there's whole like body of knowledge around Mm -hmm. that. And it is a lot of these concepts that um, have, have been around uh, and, and you're just practicing them, but there's starting to be people, you know, saying, actually, these are great ways to work that do really actually work. And, And it's very different than, you know, how management philosophy, you know, from the 19 early 1900s was i mean and maybe there is this piece the difference is leadership and and um versus just management of outcomes and getting back to kind of the the big why why are we even doing this who are we serving you know and how are we serving together and how are we serving each other along the way like you've said very very different but there's more and more research showing it actually really works and in this in this current context like i said a few minutes ago i think it, it actually um is more adaptable to the just challenges that we face today. Yeah, you were talking about chaos a little <laughs> bit earlier and a thought that came to my mind. And I suppose I'm talking to guys like me who've been around a little while, who may be frustrated with um, younger workers or even younger leaders. Um, you know, sometimes I just go, well, back in the day, <laughs> when I was the young leader, I just knew that someday I'm going to get my chance. But right now, my job is to, you know, just fall behind this person. Sure. And um, I'll get my chance someday, mm-hmm. right? And then my chance someday came and it didn't feel like it was as easy. <laughs> you know, it didn't yeah. feel like they were affording me the same kind of, um, you know, sort of privilege that I had for- afforded them. But as I've been thinking about it and reading a little bit more about it and actually interacting, you know, this chaos today, a younger person, it wouldn't be unusual for them to say, yeah, I'm not sure your way worked. Right. (laughs) Right. Right? Yeah. I'm not sure that worked. And so to me, what that means is that as, as leaders, probably we need to own the parts of it that didn't work. Mm -hmm. Um, sit down and, and spend some time listening to the deepest concerns, mm-hmm. um, believe that out of that relational building kind of thing, we may earn the opportunity to share our own concerns. Mm-hmm. And then out of that, we might find a new way that actually does work, mm-hmm. if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, totally too. makes sense. And I think that maybe touches on another thing that some may perceive as a potential weakness of servant leadership, although I don't think it's true. Um you know, shying away from conflict, you know, serving. Sometimes people think, well, you, you, how could you have any sort of conflict if you're serving all the time, you know, and that's a little like you're talking about, but there's that creative tension and wanting to know right. that can open something new if both parties engage in it with kind of the right men- mentality. Totally. And, um, you know, just taking it back to Jesus, Jesus mm-hmm. didn't shy away no. from, <laughs> from conflict. No. But I think the reason he was able to not, able to engage and and do it in such a, a an effective way is that Jesus was paying attention to what was going on on the inside so that he could better respond to what was going on on the outside. Mm-hmm. And so if you look at how Jesus ordered his life, there's lots of time by himself. There's yeah. lots of time praying. There's his understanding of the way life worked, life worked according to to scripture was beyond what anyone else has ever been able to accomplish. And so he was sinking his life into this this reality of the relationship between God, the reality of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And so because he was so, and and just one quick thing, he was sure of who he was. He was the beloved son of God. And so out of that identity and out of the security that he was loved by God, then he wasn't walking into conflict with like a hammer right he was walking into conflict like there's issues here let's talk about them let's get it figured out this is this is how the kingdom of god works right 
Anyone got a better idea about that? No? Okay. You know, yeah. so there was some persuasion in it, but right. it was it was peaceful, gentle. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. And he didn't feel like he had to have his way. It right. just felt like he was the way. Right. If that no, makes sense. It totally does. Maybe um, something you said made me think about another challenge with servant leadership. I mean, you're giving of yourself a lot. You know, you're kind of pouring out yeah. for others regularly, which can be very depleting, draining. And like, so what are things that a person who's trying to practice this should do so they don't just, you know, empty themselves out and then just kind of fall apart? Because that yeah, can happen. <laughs> no, it to- and it happens a lot. Right. Um, even in the church world and mm-hmm. in the nonprofit world, that's a really... Mm-hmm. Um, uh, often it happens often, mm-hmm. and so um, and often those worlds revolve around doing, and certainly in the business world, it's about doing. Yeah, right. Yeah. But Jesus seemed to teach us that doing actually flows best out of being, mm. and so when we pay attention to who we are, then we can best uh, uh, accomplish what we're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And so then the question becomes, how do we really focus on being hmm. and and how do we get there? And uh, there's classically for thousands of years, um, God's people have said, well, to really focus on being, you, you, you silence and solitude, you find places where you can get away by yourself and just kind of be um, and, and let God do his work there. Um, acts of um, service which we're already talking about is a way where you experience God, sign of the being, you get the humility part. Um, meditation and study of scripture is a really important part to rejuvenating the being mm-hmm. side of us and paying attention to the emotional side of us. Um, and then prayer and fasting is another mm-hmm. part of that. Mm-hmm. So if we can tap into that, yeah. in a world that's really fast that's in chaotic, it seems hard to do, but that might be the most important thing we could do. Yeah. No, I mean, I'll just go back to kind of a secular um, business construct. These things that you talked about, people are starting to say, wow, these are things yeah. that we should do yeah. because they, they actually work, it turns out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, so it's just really interesting to see how, some of these things, you know, some groups of, of, you know, faithful folks, um, have practiced for a long time or starting in different ways, but this concepts are the same starting to be recognized as like, actually that does work. Huh? Yeah. (laughs) And, um, so then, you know, it's kind of a interesting opportunity for maybe people to say, well, who else has done this? Oh, there are people. There's like you said, lots of, um, historical things that I could look back on and say, oh, that did work before. Why? And a little, like you said, then can create this kind of creative tension. People today, us, can say, well, what have people in the past done? What what did work? You know, maybe what didn't work? What should we take forward that's kind of new? And I think that's what's really exciting to me about just this, this practical servant leadership like you and I are talking about, but also that people are starting to research and say, wow, there's actually something here. It's just... It's a new day in this world. <laughs> and it's just, it, you were talking about the Netflix yeah. uh, guy earlier. Um, I read a, a short article um, that they were interviewing him. And, mm-hmm. So, man, Amazon's coming on strong. And so um, how, and a bunch of others, you know, a bunch of other streamings, how, how are you going to uh, address your competition? And he just said, those guys aren't our competition. Sleep is our competition. (laughs) I think I saw that. You saw that. (laughs) Well, what made me just connect those two things really weird is I really believe it's hard to be engaged in servant leadership when we're tired. Mm -hmm. Right? I think (laughs) think sleep is one of the most helpful things that we can do. Um, It brings a rejuvenation and a clarity of mind to our um, world, to our perception of the world that, that is just really helpful. Um, yes. And so when people say, well, what? I, I'm so busy. I, I, I would just say, you know, maybe don't stream for a couple hours every night. You right. know, do it an hour or whatever, but go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you I, know? I very much know. I, I try to get to bed at a good time, but even then, 
I still um, am tired sometimes. I literally was talking about this yesterday with somebody I work with. I was I was dragging yesterday yeah. for some of these reasons we've talked about. If you're giving a lot and doing a lot, you can get tired physically, yeah. emotionally. And and so I was trying to think through and look at some stuff like, what's going on here? Why am I tired? And then <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, I actually only slept five hours last night. Yeah. You know? yeah. No wonder I'm not my best. And yeah. so last night I went and got some good sleep. Yeah. And this morning I woke up and I was like, oh, seven and a half hours. I feel like a new person. Right. <laughs> and I texted that person. I was like, yeah, sleep really, really made a big difference. <laughs> yeah. So I guess I would just say, you know, the first thing, if you want to be engaged in servant leadership, one of the first things you should do is uh, take a nap or go mm-hmm. to bed early. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's it's good, very practical advice. But <laughs> again, more research is showing that that's a good idea yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's lots of research out there. Yeah, on that. and well, just if you need a spiritual reason to, you know, Jesus fell the fell asleep in the back of a boat during a storm. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> sleeping must be okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the greatest of all time took a sleep in the middle of a disaster and then woke up and was like, I got this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a good, good example. Maybe some, some other part I want to talk about here that is really exciting um, is just growth of people that, you know, kind of operate in this context. You yeah. know, I, I love to see people grow and come into kind of their full potential and uh-huh. as a leader myself, that's a lot of what I want to do when I'm like servant leadership. Like I see the immense potential in, in all yeah. the people I work with yeah. and I want to feed that. So maybe you could talk a little about that. That's really exciting and a fun part of this. Yeah. Well, I think one of the very best things you can do is just let invite people along on stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. Let them in. Let them see the inside of it, um, of what you're doing. Um, and so... Um, I just feel like people want relationship, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And and so if you can let them in on the on on any part of your life, really. One time I was talking to a guy and um, we were working together, and I suppose hierarchically I might have been in a different, you know, a higher spot than him, if whatever that. But he was so wise, and so I was kind of picking his brain a little bit, and he was saying, "Yo, oh, Stan, you ought to take someone along on this," and. Um, you know, this trip with you or whatever. And I was going, you think that person would really want to go? It was kind of a younger, dynamic sort of person who, you know, who would he really want to hang out with an old guy? And he just looked at me. He goes, you know what, Stan? Most people want to hang out with the people they have to follow. They want to hang out with them. And if you look at, at any great sort of leadership movement, and particularly in, in scripture, it was just hanging out together hmm. um, and then giving them opportunities as they hang out with mm-hmm. you. I think the thing about servant leadership in this whole thing is that it takes longer in the short, again, it takes longer in the short run, but in the long run, mm-hmm. all of a sudden you have multiple people who can do the very same thing you're doing, you know, at least as good, if not some of them even better Mm -hmm. and so it multiplies Mm -hmm. that whole thing Mm -hmm. and 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 so managers a business can a business can grow if it develops its people and all of a sudden you have three or four people who are are at a manager level then all of a sudden you can expand in your business Mm -hmm. into the you know four different areas Mm -hmm. um nonprofit it works the very same thing and Mm -hmm. so um Taking people along with you, mm-hmm. um, talking to them, developing relationships with them. Mm-hmm. The other thing that that does is if things get sticky, then you have a real relationship right. to appeal to them right. with yeah. rather than just sort of this corporate. Right. I have to say this <laughs> because yeah. I have to versus this needs to be said because we need to work on this. Yeah. Type and we're thing. doing it together. Right. Yeah made me think of an example I had I had heard of recently it's I like basketball um I don't know if you know who Chris Paul is oh yeah totally he was talking about you know his relationship with Devin Booker Uh who's both on the Suns and Chris is like well you know I just am spending time with him sometimes I'll just go over to his house and just you know he's playing Call of Duty or something like that I'm just sitting by him just kind of talking for a couple hours just hanging out with him yeah you know who's who's the leader there I think most people would say Chris Paul is he's like 
the guy. But Devin Booker also is the leader on the team, but they're like creating this relationship so that they can figure out how to work better together. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Chris is kind of pouring into this. So that, that's a good, good. Um, and maybe even in a virtual world, that's more important um, mm-hmm. that you actually do find some times to get face to face now that things yeah. are opening up a little bit and sort of a recreate maybe a, a sense of team that was there before, sure. but um, also move forward with, right. with that. Yeah. Had to work harder at it a little yeah. bit. Just hang out. Yeah. No, that's a, uh, so maybe the other thing you were talking about too, if there's like, you have to have a hard discussion about something, having that relationship makes it easier. I was yeah. talking with um, my boss the other day and I said, you know, there's somebody I work with that I have a good relationship with. So it's actually like really easy to talk about anything that's challenging in that s- situation versus if I don't have much of a relationship with someone, it's like, ooh, how am I going to approach this? So they don't just automatically think I'm just coming right at them. You know? yeah. <laughs> and and by having that background of a relationship, then they they know that I'm not just saying it to be harsh. It's because it's a thing that we need yeah. to address together. Yeah. Yeah. How does that kind of, you know, that that's hard. But in your context, you know, how do you navigate through that? Through saying the hard stuff. Mm-hmm. What's that look like? Well, I, I try to, A, have a relationship, and then B, um, ask questions mm-hmm. before I just wade in mm-hmm. with um, my concerns. Mm-hmm. Um, what's really interesting to me is if I'll, I'll listen a little bit and ask key questions, this, this happened really recently, the person will identify the very issue I wanted to talk to them about. Um, not to get very specific with mm-hmm. the context, but we were talking and um, I was just concerned that this person was like being really hardcore powering up, you know, some of those kinds mm-hmm. of things. And um, it had happened in a, a place that was sort of public. And so it's like, we got to talk about this. So we bring them aside and, just said, so dude, what was going on? Um, I'm from California, so we say dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, what's going on? He goes, um, wow, I I just am recognizing that a big part of my life, my work life, my service life, has been marked by me kind of being a bully. Hmm. And in my mind, I'm going, okay, this conversation just got a lot easier because instead of saying kind of bullying him mm-hmm. <laughs> into admitting he was a mm-hmm. bully, I was able just to just ask a couple questions. Mm. And if we ask insightful questions, most of the time we can get to a place where then all of a sudden mm-hmm. the relationship is opened up that if we actually do end up having to say something, mm-hmm. we can say it. And um, I was able to just say, well, first, I, I wonder if to repair this relationship with this person, you need to offer an apology. Apology, mm-hmm. and he he goes. You know what? I was thinking the very same thing. Mm-hmm. So we got on that same page. Yeah. And what a conversation that, in some level, I was thinking this could go south and sort of yeah. regretting. It became a um, a moment of real development and growth. Um, I will have to say there have sometimes have been sometimes where I I've had to say, you know, I'm going to say something really hard to you. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope that we have a good enough friendship or relationship that you can hear that I I am concerned for you and I'm concerned for the organization. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I try to just be really clear. Right. Just bam. Yeah. Yep. No, that's, that's, uh, you know, addressing some of what we talked about, the potential weaknesses of servant leadership. I mean, like you said, it's not weak. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But it just comes from that relationship of care and belief that the person has value and you don't lord anything over them, you know, but yeah, we're just um, sometimes you have to dig in on stuff together. That's that's not easy. Yeah. Uh, But that is I've found to be um, a better way. Yeah. Uh, Well, that was kind of the tougher stuff, but maybe just a couple thoughts like what is some of your favorite stuff that you get to do? Uh, leading as a team and, and working as a team. I, I think that people c- get to hear a little more about what you do and what you yeah. find joy in there. I think it will really be cool. Yeah. Well, one of the things we're sort of in year 
two of a five-year initiative to open up Mm -hmm. um, new places where we're going to send, um, you know, ambassadors, really, Mm -hmm. uh, of God's love to these places. And um, what's fun to me is, is honestly, um, to see how how people are responding to that idea and really um, to God's work in their lives. And it's like, um, you just say, hey, what if we, what if we thought about this? And all of a sudden people are all in, you know, and, um, and you cast a little vision and throw out an idea and, and all of a sudden they're going Mm -hmm. and, um, and then you get to release them and commission them into that. And, and I have to say that's, that's been one of the most, um, satisfying parts of this job, um, because there's a sense that this is God doing it and I get to ride the wave, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, it feels a little like surfing, honestly, yeah. right? We've yeah. had a really good wave and we're standing up on the board and we're not doing anything except just enjoying the moment, right? Right, And, and when you get in those kinds of contexts, I, I just find that to be really, really fun. And, mm-hmm. um, I, I am getting to travel a lot and I like to travel. Mm-hmm. I like new stuff mm-hmm. and, and interacting with people in new contexts. And it's really fun to let them introduce and host me into sort of their way of life and the things that they love, mm-hmm. you know? And so participating with them in a, in a, in a typical meal for whatever their country mm-hmm. is, it's just, it's just fun. Mm-hmm. I, a, because I like to eat, B, because I like to explore new things, but most importantly, the, you know, the C part of it is they're having a great time yeah. and it just turns into a, a fun little thing. Yeah. Um, I enjoy, I enjoy that a lot, hanging out with the people. Yeah. Um, just, just really good. And then I think just back to the whole, God's doing something here that is beyond us. Mm-hmm. And we talk a little bit about this and maybe this does tie back into the servant leadership thing. Um, Jesus, the wisest person who ever lived, said, apart, you know, apart from me, you can do nothing. Mm. But if you remain in me, you will bear much fruit. And so if there's fruit out there, honestly, it it doesn't have that much to do with me. Right. Right. It's kind of right. like my main approach now is, should we just show up? If we'll just show up, you know, yeah, this might work out pretty good. Yep. And so, um, a servant leader understands that, you know, apart from uh, from God doing something remarkable, I can't do anything anyway. Right. Yeah. And so, why wouldn't I want to try to lead in the very way that that He taught us to mm-hmm. lead? Right. Mm-hmm. And and so that's that's probably another. Thing that I've appreciated and and sense that you know this is just God doing this and it's fun to be a part of something God does. Right. Yep. That's awesome. Um, anything else you wanted to talk about on this? Otherwise, you know, it'd be really great to just let you share a little more about the details of like how people can learn more about EFM. Okay. Sure. But I'm happy to keep going. <laughs> you have a busy day. I think you have to catch a plane. I'm trying yeah, to be mindful well, of that. Yeah. Well, I uh, I do. We're okay on the plane. Um, but and I could talk about stuff like this for a long, long time. Me too. <laughs> um, and I enjoy it. Okay. So one of the things I enjoy a lot is doing this kind of thing, just mm-hmm. shooting the breeze with people who um, think and pray and are concerned about trying to order their lives this way. So Evangelical Friends Mission is um, a collaboration between the French churches in the United States all coming together, realizing that we can do something better together sometimes than we can by ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things is to make a difference around the world. And so um, these these churches have banded together and and been going for a long time um, together. This is you know mm-hmm. an older organization, 60 years or so old, but now we've just kind of hit this new stride and um it's how can we make a difference around the world anew it's time for the next wave Mm -hmm. and so if you want to find out more about it um friendsmission.com is probably the 
the best way to go about doing it. And that explains all the stuff they're doing. I do have a another little um, part of what I do. It's called Equipping Leader Ministry. Mm. Um, and it's it's designed to help people think in terms of equipping rather than leading. Mm. Um, understanding that actually leading is a subset of of equipping. And um, and so a lot of these very thoughts have grown out of my thinking about how do we actually equip rather mm. than lead. Mm-hmm. And so equippingleader.com is where Excellent. that is. And I didn't know you had that going. That's great. Yeah, I'm definitely yeah. need to look at that. Yeah. Really so, great. Anyway. Well, thank you, Stan. Thank really you, appreciate Dave. you and all that you're doing. And thanks, uh, thanks, thanks for, that the Lord is working through you. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. Thanks. Big thanks to George Fox Digital for producing this podcast. If you like what you heard today, subscribe to the George Fox Talks podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you stream from. And if you want to dig in more to this stuff or see what else George Fox community is talking about, check out georgefox.edu forward slash talks or by searching on YouTube for George Fox Talks.